Welcome back to Stars and Myths. Many traditions around the world associate an eagle in the sky with Altair, which is the brightest star in the eagle constellation. How much cultural transmission is involved? How easy is it to see a bird in this part of the sky? This episode explores that question, examining the connection between the Aquila constellation and the eagle in ancient Mesopotamian and Eurasian tradition. A broader answer is given after analyzing stories about Altair from around the world. Let's identify Altair in the constellation Aquila in the sky. In the northern hemisphere between July and September, but also in October, look high in the south. We will spot the summer triangle featuring Altair, Vega in Lyra, and Deneb in Cygnus. In the southern hemisphere, look north mostly during the winter and spring months. From Mesopotamia to India, there are many stories about big birds in the sky. The ancient Mesopotamian myth of Etena is the oldest recorded story of a human flying on a bird with written record dating back 3,700 years. In ancient Mesopotamia, scholars identified a constellation containing most of the stars that now form what we call Aquila, the eagle, and whether the eagle represents Etana's eagle is subject to debate with not many hard facts to sustain the identification. This is, however, good evidence that this celestial eagle was transferred to ancient Greece. In Greek law, Ganymede is taken to Zeus by an eagle. This Attic black figure in Fora, dating to 510 BCE, depicts Ganymede at the center of the image, serving Zeus on Mount Olympus. Ganymede is a beautiful young man, already mentioned in the Iliad as Zeus Cupbearer. The story echoes the Mesopotamian tradition of transport by eagle. The Aquila constellation is named after Zeus eagle, as also attested by Aegis. Main star in the eagle constellation is Altair, and this star is important in several traditions. Altair is the twelfth brightest star in the sky, and is an important star in India associated with a mythical bird. In South Asia, one finds the Vedic theme of the divine bird who brings Soma from heaven. The Soma is a sacrificial drink, sometimes also a, a deity, drinks pressed and handled in, in, in ritual. In later storytelling, especially the Mahabharata, the bird motif evolved into Garuda, a raptor, often depicted as a combination of an eagle and a man. Garuda steals the god nectars of immortality. Vishnu is often depicted sitting on the coil of a serpent, which is the king of the Nagas, and is thus symbolically associated with both the sky through Garuda, that you see here, and the underworld with a serpent. We find this association again between a bird and a snake. It's really repeating. In early days, Indian astronomy organized the sky primarily according to lunar mansions. For a person on Earth, the moon takes 27.3 days to return to the same position against the background of star. The ecliptic corresponds to the sun's apparent yearly pass across the sky. So if one divides the sky into 27 regions, 
Each lunar mansion is obtained by dividing the ecliptic plane into equal sections of 13.3 degrees. The divisions are called nakshatras in India. Vishnu is one of Hinduism's principal deities, the cosmic ruler. Altair, the main star in Aquila, falls in the nakshatra presided over by Vishnu. So the connection between Garuda and Vishnu is indirect. And because uh, Vishnu uh, has his mount called Garuda. Let's move on to another important mystical bird known as the Simorg. Birds play a significant role in Iranian myth and medieval literature. There are many similarities with the Indian narratives, especially in early times, as the bird was called Sena or Siena in Sanskrit. While the association between the Iranian and the Indian bird is generally accepted, the association with Aquila is more hypothetical. In medieval times, the bird transformed into a hybrid, benevolent creature known as a Simorg, which was widely depicted in literature. The Simorg is a king of the birds renowned for assisting women during childbirth. Let's note that the fight between eagles and serpents is a reality. The short-toed eagle is a great snake predator. In Mesopotamia, India and Greece, the inhabitants were seeing with their own eyes a fight between the eagle and the snakes. In those regions, the short shoe eagle was resident or breeding. The story of the fight between an eagle and a serpent must have been a part of their life. In contrast, in Persia, they are at least today seen just as they migrate. The fight between the serpent and the eagle is not a main topic in narratives. In Norse cosmology, the giant tree Yggdrasil holds the entire universe together. At the very top of the highest branches sit a wise unnamed eagle. At the bottom, gnawing at the tree's root in the underworld, lies a great serpent. Interestingly, according to the map, the story might not have been witnessed firsthand in Scandinavia all too often. In Scandinavia, the eagle and the serpent exchange insults but do not physically fight. Do we have here an example of an ecological parameter influencing the different narratives? Constellation Aquila enters the famous book by Al Sufi and Al Tair got its present name Al Nasr Al Tair, the flying eagle or vulture. No presented several stories about Al Tair and Aquila. In Mesopotamia, Greece, and the Arabic world, there is a clear connection between Aquila and the eagle. In India, the connection is indirect. So the question arises about how is it more generally in the world? Altair sits close to the Milky Way, which with some imagination looks like the wing of a bird. Is this just a coincidence? Or is there a real worldwide pattern of seeing a bird in these stars? To find out, I reviewed historical and ethnographic records and compiled a database of every story I could locate about Altair. Only tradition that specifically identified Altair were included, or journal bird myths without this connection were excluded. I analyzed each narrative for its primary association with Altair bird, human figures, animal or navigational marker. Of course, collection vary by region, so the data set might reflect what researcher 
chose to record as much as what culture emphasized. After analyzing 76 different star stories from cultures around the globe, here are the results. The association with a bird is far from universal. The number of stories varied significantly across different continents, as you see here on the slide. In East Asia, Altair is associated with a cohort. In the Arctic, it announced the return of the sun. And in the Pacific island, Altair is primarily used as a sidereal compass, marking the east direction. Nevertheless, on average, in 35% of the narratives, Altair is a bird. In South America and Australia, Altair is well represented, with a high proportion of bird association between 40 and 50%, as you see here in the plot. Next plot shows that Altair has more bird association than a Pleiad or Ursa Major. In summary, the cross-cultural analysis of myths related to Altair reveals a significant, though not universal, tendency to interpret the asterisk as a bird. Given that Australian mythologies develop independently this recurrence strongly suggests a cognitive origin rather than one of large-scale cultural diffusion. We can conclude that the shape of the constellation itself predisposes the human mind to this interpretation, making the eagle of Aquila a powerful example of how universal patterns can emerge recurrently from the human imagination. So if you have the chance of looking at the sky in a remote place with a bright nightly sky, look at Altair and question yourself. Do I see a bird here? The next episode will be about the weaver maiden and the cohort. It's a story about Altair and Vega in China. Here again, the main references, if you want to dig further in that topic. And I've added here a lexicon, if you want to go in some more details. Thank you. Bye-bye.